The salvation of Gotham City is the all-consuming mission of Bruce Wayne's never-ending battle as Batman. But there was once a time when a better Gotham seemed possible. Then everything changed, and Batman's struggle became an eternal war. This is the long defeat of Batman and the tragic fall of Harvey Dent. This is the Long Halloween. Over the span of 13 months and 13 issues, writer Jeff Loeb and artist Tim Sale's 1996-1997 magnum opus The Long Halloween weaves together a tangled web of dark secrets and tragic losses to tell the story of a young but experienced Batman, whose battle for the soul of Gotham is about to change forever. At the start of the story, which picks up shortly after the end of Frank Miller and David Mazzucchelli's classic Batman Year One, the Dark Knight has already gained both allies and enemies. But this isn't the Gotham City we know from 80 years of comics. The Long Halloween is a chronicle of Gotham's transformation, sparked by a series of murders that happen once a month on a holiday, and solidified by Harvey Dent's disfigurement and transformation into Two-Face. Over the course of a year, Gotham shifts from one controlled by low-rent criminals and high-rise gangsters into one terrorized by supervillains and madmen. Loeb and Sale create that transformation through the slow creep of Batman's rogues gallery into the story, the fall of the Mafia, which closes out many of Year One's lingering plot threads, the fall of Harvey Dent, and the identity of the Holiday Killer. These horror-inflected tragedies create a Gotham City that can never truly be saved by Batman, no matter how hard he fights. The new year, one where the promise I made to my parents, the promise to rid this city of the evil that took their lives, might finally be in reach. If 80 years of Batman comics have shown us anything, it's that Batman's war is eternal. But while serialized superhero stories make this a natural part of the medium, the never-ending battle weighs a little more heavily on the Dark Knight than most of his fellow DC heroes. That's because Batman's vow is an impossible task, but one that he's forced to believe is possible for fear of losing all hope. Batman's war may have its triumphs, this is a superhero comic after all, but it largely resembles author J.R.R. Tolkien's idea of the long defeat a concept he introduced in The Lord of the Rings, and one that has come to encapsulate never-ending war in the name of good, despite defeat being the inevitable outcome, someday, somehow. It was first spoken of by Lady Galadriel in reference to the centuries-long battle against Sauron and all the forces of darkness. To quote Wayne G. Hammond and Christina Skull's interpretation from The Lord of the Rings, A Reader's Companion, the long defeat means that no victory is complete, that evil rises again, and that even victory brings loss. It's a worldview shared by Tolkien outside of his seminal fantasy series as well. I do not expect history to be anything but a long defeat, though it contains and in a legend may contain more clearly and movingly some samples or glimpses of final victory. If Batman's vow is to utterly crush the very idea of crime once and for all, to rid Gotham of the corruption, greed, and violence that inevitably arises from the human condition, then his life is the encapsulation of the long defeat. Only brief moments of victory can light up his eternal darkness. It's a tragedy that author Jeff Loeb recognized as well. He's made a promise to his parents that he will rid Gotham City of the evil that took their lives. He will never do that, but he has to struggle on. We root for that and feel his pain. The Long Halloween is the confirmation of that long defeat. Of a Gotham that will never truly be brought into the light by Batman, or by anyone else committed to the greater good. More often, those in the light are pulled down into darkness. When does a killer not kill? Loeb and Sale have a storied comics history ranging from the inspirational Superman for All Seasons to the melancholic Marvel Color series, but their Batman stories let them indulge in gothic noir. Sale's art is one of exaggerated proportions, emphasizing specific traits in even the most ordinary of characters to accentuate their personalities. The cast of The Long Halloween is split between the ordinary and the insane, with Batman, Catwoman, and Dent caught in the middle. And Batman's rogues gallery lets Sale create his most grotesque designs, with each villain becoming exaggerated beyond the bounds of normal anatomy. These are caricatures. It's found in the Joker's broken piano key teeth, Poison Ivy's jungle of hair, Scarecrow's beanstalk of a body. Batman's rogues are like a never-ending cavalcade of Halloween costumes, defying the end of the season and spreading out its horror until Gotham is a year-round nightmare. 
It rarely matters what month it is. Colorist Gregory White bathes Gotham in muted wintry tones, and the vast majority of the story takes place in the dead of night or within the shadows. Halloween is here to stay, and almost every month introduces a new villain into the story, impacting Batman's investigation into the holiday killer and undermining the traditional crime aspect of this noir tale. These villains slowly take over crime in Gotham, edging out the increasingly desperate mafia and even being occasionally employed by them. The Long Halloween's finale, which sees Dent and the rest of the supervillains come for Carmine Falcone, is the ultimate assertion of the new normal in Gotham, and the end of the city as we once knew it. The question is, what sort of man are you? This town isn't big enough for two homicidal maniacs. Loeb and Sale's first issue begins at a sweltering June wedding, leaping forward in time until Halloween, when the holiday killer first makes their presence known by murdering Johnny Vitti, nephew of mob boss Carmine the Roman Falcone. Both characters originally introduced in Miller's Batman Year One, but missing from Batman comics in the nine years between it and The Long Halloween, including original Year One follow-up Year Two. This holiday killer has a specific modus operandi, and so does Sale in how he depicts each murder. Once a month, Holiday uses a light, silenced 22 caliber pistol with the serial number filed off to kill their victims, leaving it and a cheap Holiday decoration at the scene of the crime. They wear a high-collared trench coat and a wide-brimmed floppy fedora, riddling their victims full of bullets without warning. These victims are always connected to the Mafia, whether that's Falcone's men, those that work for his rival Sal Maroni, or anyone else connected to Gotham's organized crime. Each of these killings is presented in black and white and without the typical automatopoeia of the comic, the color and sound suddenly dropping from the page as Holiday arrives, cloaked in shadows. Only the blood and decorations are left in color. It's clear that Holiday has a grudge against the Mafia, but the reasons are hidden from Batman and the reader until the end. These killings slowly drive the mob to desperation and despair. The Long Halloween also owes a great debt to classic gangster movies, as Loeb uses archetypes and phrases from various films as shorthand. These direct lifts can feel jarring, especially to anyone familiar with their points of reference, but there's a certain charm to them as well. The Roman, Moroni, and the rest of the Mafia feel like relics from a bygone era, but instead of being phased out by modern forms of crime, they're violently rendered obsolete by the growing wave of supervillains. As the Roman loses his son Alberto to Holiday on New Year's Eve, it becomes clear that no one in the mob is safe. Loeb's story helps explain how we got from Miller's grounded approach in Year One to the heightened superhero world in every other Batman comic, but it also makes The Dark Knight's war on crime even more tragic. Bruce Wayne was orphaned by sadly ordinary crime, a small-time crook that was a byproduct of a corrupt and downtrodden Gotham City. That Gotham City is the same one we see in Year One, and is mostly still intact by the start of The Long Halloween. That is the Gotham that Batman was created to save, a goal that Bruce Wayne still believes is within reach early in The Long Halloween. But by the end of the miniseries, 13 months after this all began, that Gotham is gone. The quicksand has irrevocably shifted beneath Batman's feet and pulled him down into a horrific world of madmen, monsters, and freaks. This is not a Gotham that can be saved by Batman. Nevertheless, his war goes on. How much longer did you think I would let the Falcone family tear Gotham City in half? Splitting this city between good and evil. My city. The Long Halloween's greatest tragedy is the destruction of the soul of Harvey Dent. Two-Face has been around since 1942, but was spotlighted as an upstanding district attorney in year one, an ally to Batman before his descent into madness. The Long Halloween is just as much about Dent as it is about Wayne, who form a pact with then-police captain Jim Gordon to bring down the Roman shortly before the holiday killings begin. The three men systematically attack the pillars of the Mafia, but the rise of Holiday and the wave of supervillains soon complicate their mission. The Long Halloween creates new challenges for Batman every issue, which threaten to break the hero, but he overcomes them. On the flip side, Dent's long defeat is slow and continual, carrying over from issue to issue. Harvey is seemingly happily married to his wife Gilda, sharing domestic bliss within the encroaching darkness of Gotham. But everything begins to change when they're targeted by the Mafia. After their home is bombed, Dent becomes more and more obsessed with taking down the Roman and is soon under suspicion of being Holiday. All the while, Gilda longs for the happy life and family she thought they could share. 
Harvey is attacked in his new home by the Joker on Christmas, wrongfully pursues Wayne for a mob connection, and is given an ominous two-headed coin by his father, who Loeb hints at is suffering from a mental disorder. Harvey is no angel in The Long Halloween, but he's turned into a desperate man whose life, career, and marriage are falling to pieces because of the impossible nature of fighting against the darkness. It all leads up to an acid attack by Sal Maroney in the midst of a trial that turns the district attorney into Two-Face. His face destroyed, his mind broken. Dent becomes a man split between his burning desire for revenge and his last vestiges of honor. After months in hiding, Dent resurfaces, revealing himself as Two-Face for the first time to kill Falcone alongside Gotham's rogues. This final battle between the villains and Batman is organically turned black and white by a smoke bomb. Our hero systematically dismantles his opponents, but he can't stop Dent from murdering Falcone. The parallel is clear. This is the final holiday murder, solidifying Dent's fall from grace and ending Gotham as we once knew it. The long Halloween is over, but its horrors will echo throughout the rest of Gotham's existence. Just so we understand each other, the Calendar Man is being forgotten. I can't have that. It's Labor Day night. Only a few more hours before the holiday has passed. And you have something Holiday wants. At last, we come to the central mystery of The Long Halloween, an essential and flawed core of the story, the identity of Holiday. This mysterious killer is a direct representation of Gotham's long slide into madness because their identity, or should I say identities, draws a direct line between the ordinary crime that came before Batman and the supervillainy that arose after. After teasing and teasing, Holiday is revealed to be Alberto Falcone, the nebbish, repressed son of the Roman. After shooting Moroni, Alberto is brutally taken down by Batman, who nearly kills him in his year-long simmering rage until Gordon brings him to his senses. Alberto's reveal makes sense. His was the only body not recovered, and his hatred for his father's criminal empire is hinted at early on. By becoming Holiday, Alberto takes his place alongside the rest of the supervillains who have swallowed up Gotham. And by destroying the mob, he's put an end to the family that rejected him. You thought that Gotham City was synonymous with organized crime, but Gotham City has changed. It doesn't want your kind anymore. Now look at me. I'm bigger than all of you put together. Alberto is committed to Arkham Asylum alongside Dent and the rest of the briefly escaped inmates, and the Holiday Saga is seemingly wrapped up. That is, until Loeb cuts back to Gilda, mourning Harvey, monologuing, and disposing of evidence that shows the reader that she was the original Holiday. That is, until Harvey took over after a few months. I found the gun in the basement. You told me it was evidence, but I knew. You had the same idea as me. You picked up right where I left off. So we could have time together. A child. A secret. This last page reveal completely recontextualizes the long Halloween, turning Gilda into someone as mad as the rest of Gotham, Harvey into a corrupt vigilante long before his transformation into Two-Face, and Alberto into an imposter, longing for fame as a way to be accepted as part of the new Gotham. It's certainly a bold twist by Loeb, and one that subverts the obviousness that Alberto was holiday all along. But it doesn't quite make sense. Gilda and Harvey just instinctively knew when to switch, and when to let Alberto take over, and why did they let Alberto live? How did these characters juggle their mutually exclusive secret identity? Rationally, the Holiday triple fakeout doesn't quite work, but thematically, Holiday's true identities show how so many have been corrupted by Gotham's long defeat. The corrosion was there at the start, slowly eating away at Harvey, Gilda, and Alberto until they were permanently transformed alongside the city. Batman and Gordon are left with the lingering question of Holiday's true identity, but will never know the roles that Gilda and Harvey played. It's a defeat that Batman will never be able to make right or ever truly understand. But the fall of Harvey Dent and the transformation of his city is a great enough burden on its own. I made a promise to my parents that I would rid the city of the evil that took their lives. No matter what that evil looks like or becomes, I believe someday I will make good on that promise. I have to. I believe in Batman. The war goes on for the Dark Knight, a war that has lasted for more than 80 years. But his long defeat is inevitable. 
the long Halloween never ends in Gotham.